Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to bring your video. What I've guessed today is a bring you the vision to video and today I want to give you guys some tips and tricks on heroic missions. So yes, if you guys didn't know, heroic difficulty is in the game at the moment. You guys have an option of playing some missions or strongholds on heroic and although it is really rewarding with a lot of weapons and gear and you also get the classified sets, it is really hard and especially if you're playing this with one friend or two friends or maybe if you're doing this with randoms. Overall, it's just really hard, it takes a long time, and I wanted to make a video like this, give you guys some tips and tricks, and to pretty much show you guys some of the tactics me and my friends have been using to complete these missions. We have been farming them for about 5 or 6 hours, something like that, and just overall kind of give you guys a, a little heads up of what you should do if you are struggling. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos, and let's get right into this. Alright, before we talk about anything, the first thing you guys want to do is actually go to your controls on your settings and I'm not really sure if this is on consoles but on PC, if you are on PC, this is something you 100% should do. Go to your controls, go all the way down and go to the option where it says move around corner speed. By default this is actually set on uh, slow and whenever you're playing heroic missions or just PvE missions in general, most of the time you are in cover and this is something that switching to fast is going to really help you out go around corners um, you know, if you're behind a box or maybe a wall, it's really going to help you out to be kind of faster, You should, I should say, um, in cover. So definitely change this to fast if you have this on slow. That's the first thing because, again, in heroic missions, 99% of the time, you're going to be behind cover to stay alive a little bit longer or get some healing from your t uh, gear talents or, or whatever the case is. So, again, this is something you definitely want to change. Now, moving on, the first thing that I actually want to talk about is actually your skills. So for your skills, the first thing I would recommend using is actually a Reviver Hive. And although this is broken, and although this half, like half the time it doesn't work, it's still very useful and it's still gonna save you guys some troubles of, you know, restarting and replaying the mission again. Because yes, as I said, although it doesn't work half the time, when it does work, hopefully it is at the time where, when you most need it. So the Reviver Hive is, is something you guys should definitely have on, especially if you're playing with randoms, you never really know what can happen with them. So Reviver Hive is the first thing. The next skill I would recommend using 100% is actually Flame Turret. This is something that's really going to help you guys out and if you remember from the Division 1, whenever you ran a Flame Turret, it pretty much acted as a kind of crowd control system you could say. Um, same thing with this, especially in Heroic Missions. You guys can put a Flame Turret on a, on a doorway or maybe a box and it's really going to protect you from the enemies kind of rushing you and you know overwhelming you. So Overall, running a flame turret with a kind of reviver hive setup is really good. And also, if you don't want to use a flame turret for the kind of crowd control, you guys can use something like a um, cam launcher, like the heal cam launcher, or even something like a uh, fixer drone. It's really going to help you out again to kind of keep you alive and give you a bit more health. So any of those skills will work out. Um, besides that, I mean, nothing else is really that useful. Maybe you can use a Seeker Mine for a bit more damage, maybe you can use something like a Shield, but overall it's just not too reliable in my opinion. Um, something like the Flame Turret, Reviver Hive, and something like a Drone is a lot better for PvE. The next thing I do want to talk about is actually your Specialist, or your Specialization I should say. So, the two things I would recommend using is either a Survivalist or a Demolitionist. The Sharpshooter is good for the damage, and yes, you can pretty much one-shot a lot of enemies with that sniper, but the survivalist and the demolitionist also acts as crowd control. There are so many scenarios where we were getting overwhelmed, you know, in a tight kind of room or situation, and one of us shot a survivalist kind of arrow at the floor or at an enemy, and it not only did it do damage to him, but it also put him on fire, and it kind of gave us a little bit of time to, you know, back away or, or maybe shoot him back and, and try to kill him and stuff like that. So something like that, it also a like acts as crowd control. And that's something you always want to have for, you know, heroic missions, especially if you are struggling. Same thing with Demolitionist. It does a lot of damage in a kind of larger area. And what I noticed in heroic missions is that a lot of the enemies tend to kind of stick together and just kind of team shoot you. So again, the Demolitionist will kind of help you out with that. Doing damage, it's going to stagger them. And uh, just overall, it's really nice with also the talents that you get, like burn resistance and some other uh, specialization talents. Um, obviously, you can use the sharpshooter. It's not a 
you know, bad specialization by any means, but again, that's something I would recommend taking into consideration, especially if you are playing with randoms or with another person. The next thing I want to talk about is actually weapons. So the two kind of categories of weapons I would recommend running is either LMGs or ARs. Yes, the rifles are good, they're going to do a lot of damage, but what I noticed is that one, you just run out of ammo way too quick with rifles, at least I did, and I'm not really sure if it's just my problem or same thing happens with you guys, but <clears throat> for heroic missions, you run out of ammo really quickly as it is, and with those rifles, sometimes it's going to take you even one magazine, if not more, to kill a, a purple or even a elite, so with that rifle, yes, the damage is going to be higher, yes, you're going to be doing you know, a bit more damage, but overall the ammo kind of capacity and just the ammo situation um, is something you kind of want to avoid, and I'm not saying you shouldn't use it, but if you are running something like a demolitionist or a survivalist, obviously using a rifle with that isn't the smartest idea. So LMGs, ARs, I, I like using the P416, I also like running the uh, M60, you know, you get a lot of bullets, it does a lot of damage, and you can pretty much spray the enemies and kind of, you know, suppress them, I guess you could say. So ARs, LMGs is the way to go. The next thing I do want to talk about is actually your playstyle and what you should be using on your gear. So first of all, for the playstyle, you always want to be in cover, in my opinion. And yes, although it's boring and although it's slow, it's going to take you a little bit longer to finish these missions. For heroic missions, you have to play in cover or else you are going to get one-shotted or you're just going to get folded pretty much instantly. You guys can see from the gameplay um, in the background, I'm not using the tankiest build, but I do have a little bit of armor. I'm sitting at like 180k, 85k. So I'm kind of tanky, and although I have that much armor and health, I'm still getting pretty much one-shotted and just getting folded if I'm not in cover. So you always want to play in cover. Again, it's boring, it's slow, I do understand that, but if you are, you know, struggling, especially if you are with, with randoms and you don't want to keep going down, play in cover is, is the way to go. Now, as for your gear, the first thing I would recommend using is actually Patience on your knee pads. What Patience does is, after being in cover for 3 seconds, armor repairs by 5% every 1 second. And that's also another great reason why you should be in cover, is because if you have this talent, it's going to heal you a lot, and if you are running a fixer drone, or if you have, um, you know, a, a cam launcher, you have a lot of ways to heal you, and it's just going to make you that much more tanky. So using patience is really, really important on the knee pads. And the other thing is you just want to spec a lot into damage to leads. Really for a PvE build, especially, uh, you know, th those harder kind of missions, you don't want to use anything else but damage to leads. Like, yes, maybe using Vital or, or Harden is going to be semi-decent, but at the end of the day, you want as much damage to leads as possible on that build. I, I think I'm sitting at around 115, 112% damage to leads on this build. And you guys can see if I'm shooting at, you know, elite, if it's a boss, if it's just a normal elite, I'm absolutely melting them. And if I get a little bit weak, I'm going to do a bit more damage. So that's kind of also another reason why you see me not heal myself a lot of the times and not waste my kind of mech kit. So it, ju it just really depends on your build, but overall, I would recommend specking a lot of damage to leads and also having patience on your knee pads. The last tip I do want to mention really quickly is actually to take out the robots or the walking dogs first whenever you see them. And this is actually something that you guys can see from, from the gameplay as well, that sometimes they just one shot you right away and you don't even see them or pretty much like notice them where they're shooting you from. For that reason, I would recommend keeping track of them, how many they are, which ones you guys kill and stuff, because they will one-shot you. It doesn't matter on the build you have, you can have like 220,000 armor, or you can have 150,000 armor, it doesn't really matter. They are going to one-shot you, they do a lot of damage, they are pretty kind of tanky as well, that's why you have to kind of focus fire them, and again, just keep track of them, see where they're located and where they're coming from. And especially if you are playing with randoms, that's the uh, like number one thing I would, sh I would say, should be your kind of priority when you, whenever you see them spawn. And instead of going for the boss, instead of going for the other enemies, kill these robots, kill these kind of walking dogs first, because they are the most problem in, in my opinion. So um, yeah, that's pretty much everything for, for the tips. Um, if I did miss anything, let me know in the comments. I respond to all my comments, as you guys know. But like I said in the beginning, me and my friends have been playing this for a little bit now, and those are kind of the tips we did collect over the past couple hours and... 
you know, it kind of helped us out. Obviously, at first, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be annoying because you, when you die, you have to reset the entire mission, which is, you know, kind of unfortunate, but it is worth it at the end because the, the loot drops and just the rewards in general are really, really nice. But once again, that's going to be it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.